In part one, I talked about how bad conventional pasteurized and homogenized dairy is for everyone, including those who are not lactose intolerant. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the alternatives and exceptions. But the most important health information for you to know is to listen to your own body. My biggest problem with popular diets or nutrition advice is that it says that this, whatever it may be, is healthy for everyone. And what might be healthy for you could be toxic to me and vice versa. So it's very important to listen to the messages you get after anything that you eat or drink. So if you, for some reason, feel a lack of energy or uh, gassy, uh, your skin might break out or a loss of mental clarity or depression, this is a strong indication that these foods are not good for you. So anything outside of giving you energy or mental clarity is foods and drinks that you should avoid. Now, with regard to dairy, I've always been for a dairy-free diet and mainly because it's very odd for us to drink the milk of another species. But in defense of that argument, what I've learned is that it's guessed about 10,000 years ago, probably because of a famine or something like that, we developed an enzyme called lactase in order to digest the milk of cows. But remember, we no longer need to. Now, I don't drink milk myself, but if you are able to get milk from an actual pasture-raised farm, that feeds the cows organic grass, and it works for your body, meaning you don't have any digestive issues, no gas, no skin problems, no joint pain or lower back pain, then go ahead by all means, it can give you many health benefits, as over 10 million Americans drinking it already know. And in this case, I would suggest no more than two cups a day. In fact, one cup of raw organic pasture-raised milk has more probiotics than commercial yogurt. And raw milk farms are kept to the highest standards because they don't boil their milk at high heats in the end, killing all the bacteria like pasteurized milk does. And in fact, there are many people who are lactose intolerant with pasteurized dairy that don't have that issue with raw dairy. In 2007, the Weston Price Foundation conducted a survey in Michigan and they found that of those diagnosed with lactose intolerance, 82% stated that they could drink raw milk without any problems. And I'll include the links for that and everything else I mentioned below. Research by board certified pathologist, Dr. Ted Beals found that you're 35,000 times more likely to get sick from other foods than you are from raw milk. A Cornell study performed on CDC data showed 1,100 illnesses were linked to raw milk between 1973 and 2009. And meanwhile, 422,000 illnesses were caused by pasteurized milk and no deaths from raw milk and at least 50 deaths from pasteurized milk and pasteurized cheese. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to convince anyone to go out and start drinking milk, but if you are doing that already, be sure to get the best possible product for your body as well as the cow and the environment because the alternative is terrible for everyone as I explained in part one. Now be very clear, I'm saying two words that are very similar that mean totally different thing. Pastured or pasture-raised is very different from pasteurized. Pasteurized is when you take milk and heat it at high temperatures, killing all the bacteria, probiotics, enzymes, and everything else. Whereas pasture-raised or pastured is where the cow is out on the farm or in the pasture as they are supposed to be eating organic grass. Now, raw milk have other benefits for your skin, hair and nails, increased bone density, reduced allergies, weight loss and muscle gain. It contains minerals, fat-soluble vitamins A and D, and K2. It has short-chain fatty acids, CLA, and omega-3s. Now, CLA helps to fight cancer and reduce body fat. And eating raw organic milk eliminates the dangers of hormones, antibiotics, pesticides, as well as pasteurization and homogenization, as I talked about in part one. It also has probiotics in it, but especially when used for raw organic homemade kefir or yogurt, not commercial, and raw organic cheese. Now, as mentioned, I don't drink milk, but I do make raw organic kefir with it, which I think is a superfood, and I eat a cup of this in the morning, as well as a cup at night. Switching it off with coconut kefir, and you can see my videos on how to make both of those and almost all those with lactose issues can take kefir because it has no galactase and it's acid neutral since the grains change the chemical composition of the milk. It also adds trillions of bacteria 
and kefir has been confirmed in medical studies to help fight cancer, support detoxification, killing aflatoxins, boosts immunity, builds bone density, it heals IBS and IBD, it helps overcome allergies and asthma, and improves lactose intolerance. And I know that sounds crazy, but keep in mind, fermentation changes the chemical makeup of the foods. And in the case of fermented milk, kefir is very low in lactose since the kefir grains consume it all. Now that being said, I never suggest eating commercial yogurt or kefir because there's no regulations on how long they actually have to ferment for. So you don't know if there's any probiotics or good bacteria in there. And they often sweeten with sugar, aspartame, and unnatural sweeteners. Now with the raw milk or kefir, if you want to test to see if you have an intolerance such as lactose or casein, take a few drops of the raw milk or kefir and put it on the inside of your wrist and let it dry and wait 24 hours. Now if you have any redness, irritation, or a rash, then steer clear of it altogether. If not, and you'd like to, to switch from pasteurized milk to raw milk, then start eating a little bit at a time and see how your body accepts it. You could have a healing crisis or gas or bloating, but always listen to your body and check with your doctor about any allergy testing. Now, with regard to uh, raw milk, I only suggest taking uh, one cup in the morning and one cup at night because raw milk is high in a sugar called galactose. Now, I only suggest this for people who insist on drinking pasteurized milk. And another reason I don't like it is the very reason they're insisting on it is because milk has natural opioids in it, which makes you addicted to dairy products like milk and cheese. And this is also very bad for your immunity. Some of the alternatives that I really like are coconut milk, which I make myself rather than commercial brands with many unhealthy ingredients in it. And you can see my videos on how to cut open a coconut and easily make that yourself. I also make hemp and almond milk, and you can see my videos on those as well. Both of which I prefer over commercial brands because they have a lot of artificial sweeteners and other unhealthy ingredients. I don't like rice milk because it has a lot of empty carbs and it also has a high heavy metal content. I don't like soy milk at all because it's mostly GMO full of pesticides, phytic acid, and endocrine disruptors, and I don't eat any soy products at all unless they're organic and properly fermented, but you can see my videos on the dangers of soys and vlogs on that. As far as ice cream, I have a great alternative for ice cream that I make, and you can see my video on that. And in the blog associated with this video, I'll have more dairy-free recipes that not only are good for you, but actually taste great. I'll also have a list of questions you might want to ask your dairy farmer if you are getting raw dairy to make sure that you're not consuming any of the toxins from typical uh, pasteurized dairy and make sure you're not taking part in supporting that type of abuse to animals and abuse to the environment. Now in part three, I talk about cheese and whether or not that's healthy for you and if so, what are the best and worst ones that you really want to avoid and I think the answer is going to surprise you. So. For more health and wellness videos, don't forget to subscribe, and I hope this has been helpful for you. Good luck.